Okay, it's time to step it up a gear. We've looked at basic shell voicings on dominant chords, where we found these two useful shapes, and then we adapted these shapes to create minor seventh and major seventh chords too. Well, now we're going to add extensions. These are extra notes added beyond the seventh. Now, there's quite a lot of this, by which I mean there are lots of things to go through in this video. So, if this is new to you, take your time, and I'll try to make sure I cover everything in a logical fashion. But don't feel like you have to get your head around everything in one go. It'll all be clearly laid out in the chapters, in the headings, and in the time code. So it should be fairly easy to get started, have a play around, and come back for the next bit when you're ready. OK, extensions add colour making the chord more interesting, creating more of a mood. And they can actually help with the role or the function of the chord too, so they're worth getting to grips with. To start off, we'll use diatonic extensions, which means we're just adding notes within the key of the basic chord. For G7, for example, the theory is this. G7 is in the key of C, so we're just going to add extra notes from the scale of C. And if you're not quite up to speed with keys and chords, take a look at my videos on basic chords and chords with sevenths. We build chords by stacking the notes up in intervals of a third. So we'd have the root, G, then the third, that's B, the fifth, which is D, and the flattened seventh, F. That's a basic G7 chord, but we can keep extending. The next note would be A, that's the nine, then C, which is the 11, and then the 13 would be E. Now, if we keep going, we'll actually get to the next G, so we've gone as far as we can. So, our three diatonic extensions are the 9th, the 11th, and the 13th. In fact, when we're extending major chords, we almost never include the 11th, because it clashes badly with the 3rd. So we're really only talking about the two extensions we see all the time, a major 9 and a major 13. And by the way, what do we call these chords with extensions? G7, with the 9th added, is simply called G9. And for the added 13th, you just call it a G13 chord. Whenever you have the odd number added above the 7, 9, 11 or 13, you assume the 7 is also part of the chord. So a G major 7 with a 13th added will be called G maj 13. There's no need to mention the major 7th. The 9th and 13th then are the two common diatonic extensions we'll add to these shell voicings for dominant chords. Let's look at some really common shapes that come from taking our shell voicings and just adding a note on the second string. For the fifth string shape, it's really easy to add the ninth. For C7, it would look like this. Here's C7. And the ninth is a D, and that's right here on the third fret of the second string. So now we're playing C9. Lots of people simply use the third finger across the top three strings altogether, giving you a bar on the third, second, and first strings. The top note in this case, G, is the fifth that we got rid of when we first formed our shell voicings. It's happy to come along for the ride and helps the chord sound a bit fuller, even if it doesn't actually add any new info. If you wanted to extend that chord further though, you could reach around with your little finger and add an A on the top string, which is the 13th. So now we have C913, or we could just call that C13. And of course, there are other ways to play these chords. But this approach is all about visualizing the relationships and giving you a basic grounding so you can work out these chords for yourself. On the 6th string shape, you can easily add the 13th on the 2nd string. For G7, down on the 3rd fret, the 13th is an E, and you'll find it on the 5th fret of the 2nd string. If you extend that chord up to the 1st string, you'll find the 9, that's A in this key, on the 5th fret, the same fret as the 13th. So, there are a couple of different options for your shell voicings, adding ninths and thirteenth extensions as you like. This sort of thing gets used a lot in the blues, and if you stick to the extension we found on the second string, that's the ninth for the fifth string shape, and the thirteenth for the sixth string shape, you could go around the circle of fifths alternating as we did before, and you'll find that the fourth finger just stays on the second string, playing either the ninth or the thirteenth. Let's take a look. 
So if we just focus on the second string extensions, we've got these two shapes, a 13th for the sixth string shape and a 9th for the fifth string shape. Try this. D13 up here on the 10th fret with the root on the sixth string, that means your fourth finger is playing the 13th. That's a B on the 12th fret of the second string. Now moving to G9 with its root on the fifth string. And that ninth is now an A. And if we move to C13, the little finger can stay in the same place because the 13 of C is the same note as the nine of G. We can repeat that for F9, moving to B flat 13, E flat 9, going to A flat 13, D flat 9, moving to G flat 13, you can think of that as F sharp 13, and then B9, and again, we've run out of guitar neck. Let's play this over the circle of fifth jam track we saw in the first episode. There's a link in the description, and it's eight bars on each chord, starting with G7. So we'll start with G9, then move on to C13, and just keep going down the neck. Here we go. And if you're playing a blues, say, which uses chords 1, 4, and 5, you might well play one of these shapes for chord 1, and then move to the other for chords 4 and 5. Let's say you're playing a blues in G, you might play G13 here. Then for chord 4, you've got C9 right here, and a couple of frets higher for chord 5 right here. A 2, 3, a 4. Now, of course, whatever type of chord you're playing, whether it's major seven or minor seven or the dominant seventh chords we've just seen, the extensions are located in the same place relative to the root. So let's go through the same drill, but now with the other chord types. For major seven chords with a root on the sixth string, you can include extensions like this. The 13 is easy to reach on the second string or you can bar across the top two strings with the little finger to include the ninth as well. Notice, by the way, I'm not changing the chord name just because I've got a ninth in this chord now. Unless the chord specifically asks for some other kind of nine, like a sharp nine or a flat nine, which we'll get to in a future video, we can generally include the diatonic nine in a 13th chord without running into any problems or any need to change the name of the chord. For the major seven with its root on the fifth string, you have this, the nine is here, that's C major nine. But playing the 13 on this shell voicing, like this, that's a bit awkward, it's a stretch, the second string's open, and the 13 sounds a bit isolated from the rest of the chord. 
it's not ideal. So what you might do is play it this way, moving the E, that's the third, from the fourth string up to the second string, and that's C major 13. And likewise, for minor seven chords, here's our G minor seven shape, with its root on the sixth string, and here are those extensions again, both more or less reachable with the fourth finger. Although I might re-finger that a little bit by using my first finger down on the bottom string. And of course, you could simply play G minor nine without the 13, like this. For a minor seven shape with its root on the fifth string, the ninth fits beautifully. Here's D minor nine, for example. Nice, huh? You could try this shape at the start of How Insensitive, where that ninth E sounds lovely against the A in the melody. How insensitive it must have seemed. Now the 13 isn't exactly impossible to play. It's a real stretch. So again, you might think about revoicing, that is to say, placing one of the notes in a different octave. You could play this. You can see I've moved the third, that's F, from the fourth string up to the second string. Now I've lost the ninth, but it all makes more sense for my hands, and musically it makes more sense too. A couple more things to say here. When we first looked at extensions, I said the 11th, that's the fourth note of the scale, isn't generally included in the major chords because it clashes with the third. In minor chords, though, there's no such issue with the 11th because the third is lower. There's no risk of that nasty dissonance. You'll often see a minor 11 chord. and It's an interesting way to embellish a straight minor chord. Let's take a look at that. If we go back to our G minor 7 on the bottom string, well, the 11 will be here, behind the fifth. So let's get rid of that fifth, and we have this, G minor 11. Remember that lovely D minor 9 shape based on the fifth string we saw a moment ago? Well, how about adding an 11 above that? In D, the 11 is G. And we can play that by barring with the first finger, like so. Right then. That's a bit of a journey into simple diatonic extensions. In the next session, we'll be adding the sixth to the basic triad and also taking a look at suspended chords, sus4, sus2, that sort of thing. After that, it's altered extensions, which is something I think people struggle with a bit. So I'll do my best to keep it short and clear. Thanks for watching. See you next time.